All right, so I'm back, and today, as you can tell, we're going to be taking a look at the um, Beast Wars um, Rhinox. Uh, now, this is again like the Cheeto or the Fox Kids repaint um, when they bought the show um, right before Beast Machines uh, aired. They got a bunch of repaints. Um, now, unlike the Cheetor, <laughs> um, he doesn't look anything like Rhinox. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't even know what to say. Um, you know, this is supposed to be like more of a tan. It says gray. Um, the uh, red should be green. Uh, and he should have some gold accents in there. Um, but he doesn't have any of that. So, yeah, he fails utterly as a Rhinox. Um, and we'll we'll show them off with the other Rhinox here in a little bit. Um, but as a figure, we're, that's what we're going to really look at. Um, so he's got accessories. He does come with a sword, uh, kind of like a scimitar. And he just kind of plugs into his hand. Um, yeah, it works. And he also comes with his chain gun, but. Uh, it's not like uh, the show where, you know, he was able to point the chain gun. This is uh, very strange that it's it's the top of the chain gun is the the blades and stuff. So it's, you know, you press the little button, it does spin. But, um, you know, this is more like a um, saw at this point. You know, it, I don't see how he'd be able to use this as a gun. So he, this is one of those, I'll just walk into you slowly with this thing spinning and hope that I can do some damage. Um, so it's, I mean, it, it's the concept behind it that made the, that made the design of the chain guns. Um, just real quick here. This is what the chain guns should look like with the handle here, you know, and the blades pointing forward. Whereas this one, the handle is here. So the blade faces up. So, and this is off the universe or the generations Rhinox. Anyway, so yeah, this thing's kind of ridiculous. Uh, I'll set that off to the side and go back to the figure. So, um, his head is on a swivel. Uh, and he does have the, uh, this is his Predacon face. Let's zoom in here. So this is his Predacon face here. And if you open that up, that's his Maximal face. Um, uh, I prefer the, the, I kind of prefer the Maximal face, but I prefer to keep this closed because of the fact that I really don't like these big wings. Um, that's, that's kind of ridiculous there. Uh, you know, Cheetors was at least flipped down. Um, and I remember Wasp and Eaters was, you, you open up the chest and the whole entire assembly flipped around and there's a whole nother head down there, which was cool. Um, so, uh, posability wise, his arms are on these swivels here. Um, as you can hear. Things are getting a little jammed up. And, and you have to keep his arms out like this. You can't, you know, like they can go that way, but they, yeah, it, it just, um, yeah, this is one of the worst of the shell formers. Um, let's see. So his arm does swivel in and out. Uh, he's got a ball jointed elbow, but you don't get a whole lot of motion because of this giant uh, rhino leg hanging off his shoulder. Um, nothing at the waist. Uh, that's not too surprising. Uh, legs are on ball joints, but again, you know, this piece gets in the way. This piece gets in the way. Um, stuff in the back gets in the way. Um, the giant calves get in the way of moving, and it just, it just doesn't work. Uh, it's got a swivel... 
No, it looked like it had a swivel below, uh, uh, below the hip. But uh, he does have a bend in the, uh, the knee. And there's also a rotator in the knee. So you can get a little extra motion there. Again, it's one of those, you know, good luck trying to find a way to utilize this. You know, it because everything's just getting caught. And, um, and then his toes do pivot up and down so uh, that's more for transformation but you can use it to get a little bit more poseability out of the feet but um i mean mostly what you're looking at is this is how you have to pose this guy so that he doesn't get hindered by all his crap um i mean and he does have a lot of kibble um this is uh like i said this is one of the worst i've ever seen uh, aside from big convoy, um, the, this is this is gets to that point of this is just ridiculous. I mean, the whole rhino is just right there. Um, I mean, the only thing that really integrates into the robot mode is the rhino's jaw, his eyes, and the uh, back legs. Um, again, we'll we'll get into this more when we. Uh, bring out the other Rhinox. Um, but let's get him transformed. Um, so what you want to do to transform him, uh, and I haven't done this in a while, so forgive me if I do something wrong. Flip up the jaw, and then you want to take these pieces here and then you flip these up. Those are actually his Rhino eyes, um, which is a little creepy. So you flip those up, and then you want to uh, disassemble this gun here. So you just pull this thing off, and then you pull these little chain pieces off and then you take this piece and um, you want to push the handle down and then you can slide it in here and I'll just plug in and you want to make it so that the handles at the top um, so when you flip this up it kind of just stays there so that's that's pretty cool um, and then you want to I'm trying to remember where the saw blade goes. Oh, well, we'll figure it out as we go. Uh, take this top horn piece here, and flip this forward. That'll just kind of lock into place there. Um, take the saw blade here, and it just uh, plugs into the uh, back. There's just a little port right there, and there's a hole right in the middle. Plug that in. Um, you want to flip these arms up. Um, there's a peg right, peg hole right in there, and there's a peg on, the, on his elbow or his wrist, and you want to get those lined up. It's hard to show off in the camera, but uh, that's how it, how you need to have it. Let's plug that in. So he's got his robot elbows sticking out the back. So you want to take this piece here, um, I'll try and open this up, because we got these pieces here, um, and these will just, um, there's a little plug right there, and right there, and you just want to plug these guys in. Now, you know, most of the time I'm not a huge fan of parts forming. I'm okay when it does the weapons. Um, I do appreciate this figure um, because of the fact that it does integrate all its weapons into its beast mode. Um, you might have to dismantle the weapons to get it done, but it is something that you can do. All right. And then you want to uh, rotate the legs around. And then you bend at the knee all the way. Flip the uh, back toe, or this toe here, this will flip in, and this will flip up. And then you take this piece here, and you want to, it's on a hinge right here at the body, and there's a ball joint. So you want to rotate this up, so it kind of goes in up here, and then just kind of tuck the elbow back there. Do the same thing on this side, and then you take the uh, 
sword, and this will just um, plug in on this little plug right here. And as you can see, it just kind of fills in the, the back section there. And there, just kind of straighten things up. There is the uh, Beast Wars Rhinox in Beast Mode. Um, now, now that he's in Beast Mode, he's not that bad. Um, get everything. Yeah, it, he does hide the robot pretty well. Um, he is a stocky little Rhinox or Rhino, um, but that's what he's supposed to be. Um, yeah, he's got some robot kibble down at the bottom, but it's not you. It's not as offensive as like um, some. Um, figures where you flip it over and it's like, oh, there's the robot tucked underneath. Yeah, the robot's tucked underneath, but it does hide it um, a little bit better. Um, so, yeah. Uh, posability in this mode, uh, his back legs do, um, they're on ball joints inside here, so you can kind of splay them out a little bit. And then they're also got a little hinge in there, so you can kind of move that around. Uh, front legs can rotate up. Um, there's a little wiggle to it, but not much. And then the, the mouth does open and close. Um, so that, that's, uh, that's really all there is to him. Um, nothing, nothing out of this world amazing with engineering. Um, I'm not a huge... I, I, I can forgive shell formers, um, but this one is a little bit extreme. Um, where it hinders the robot. So let's get him back into robot mode. Um, so you want to straighten out the legs, split the uh, back piece here, and you want to take the uh, first little chain thing off, and then the second one, and pull off the saw blade, and rotate these down. You want to rotate the legs around so that the little spike section is on the outside. Flip down the foot, flip out the heel spur. Flip the uh, chest down, and you pull out the, uh, the gun here. Flip down the arms, and you just kinda wanna get these uh, shoulder pieces just in a way so that they're not too intrusive. Um, which is easier said than done. Um, I just kind of like putting them like that. And then you flip the uh, bottom jaw around. Uh, take this section here and this flips back. And then you take the eyes and then you just rotate them down like so. And then to assemble the weapon, you just take the uh, saw blade here, and it just plugs onto this orange piece right there. Take this piece here. Plug that in. And plug this in. And then we got the sword here. Just plugs into his hand. And plug it into his hand. So, yeah. Um, scale wise, um, here he is next to the Seeker Mold. Um, and you can see he's, um, he would be taller than the regular Seeker. Um, he's a little bit taller because of the cone, but he's got a lot more bulk to him. Uh, here he is next to the Eye Gear Seeker. So it goes up to about his waist. Here he is with the uh, Masterpiece car. So, yeah, he's a, he's a thick deluxe. And... Show him with... Uh, Here's his wave mate, um, Cheetor. 
so yeah, they're about the same size. Um, here is the new generation's rat trap. And the rat trap is still a little bit smaller. Uh, I still wish this rat trap was smaller than, um, than a deluxe. I think they really, I mean, I'd been happy to pay the same deluxe price for something, you know, just half an inch shorter. And here he is next to the Generations Rhinox figure. Who, yeah, he's got a lot of kibble too. Um, you know, he's got a lot of kibble hanging off of him, you know, but like back there. But he's not nearly as offensive as, as this guy. I mean, he doesn't have the big side skirtings, um, stuff like that. Um, Rhinox here is actually quite good if I can get his legs to stand. He has a really hard time standing because these joints are really loose. So, and, and Rhinox was a bigger character in the show too. So he really should be this size. So, um, honestly, um, for a rating for that toy, um, you know, not only is there a better version out, being this Generations one or maybe the Tarka one. Um, yeah, if if. If you're more into that color scheme, uh, I know it's a little different, but uh, um, yeah, on honestly, there's a better one out. Um, it was never very good to begin with, um, so I don't recommend this figure. Um, the only, absolute only reason why you should get this this mold um, is if you're a completist of the original Beast Wars line. Uh, then you have to have it. Um, and in this coloration, um, unless you're one of those completists that has to have every single repaint of every single toy, then this is an easy pass. Because um, I'd prefer, you know, if you're going to at least get him, get him in the Rhinox colors, like the 10th anniversary. Um, but, I mean, if you're just looking for a version of Rhinox, uh, for your shelf, get the Generations one. So don't even think about the Beast Wars one. The Generation one is far superior uh, in every, absolutely every way. He's he's better, um, except for it standing at the moment. I'm sure it's just something I did wrong. But but yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna give him a. Um, I'm gonna give him a two out of ten. The only reason why he's getting a two is because the uh, the beast mode actually is quite convincing. So, um, but yeah, that's all there is there.